So today we're looking at lead code 912, sort an array. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are going to sort an array. Uh, the method we're going to use to sort this array is called quicksort. Now this is, a, this is an efficient algorithm, it's an efficient way of sorting, but it is a bit complicated and it takes some time to wrap your head around how this algorithm works. So we'll go step by step, we'll even conceptually map it out, but if you're still unclear or it still seems confusing, I would recommend just rinse and repeat. Just take some inputs, write it out step by step to really understand how this algorithm is working. It uses a few patterns that I think are very important to be familiar with as they do come up in other leet code questions, uh, even that are not related to sorting. In particular, divide and conquer, recursion, as well as using two pointers. Okay, so let's jump into, into this. So what we're gonna first do is I'm gonna just go ahead and throw up the main function for quicksort right up here so we can take a look at it. And then there is a helper function which is called pivot, which is really the heart of this, this, uh, this method, this quicksort. It's really this pivot, this pivot helper function. And once we understand that, the actual code for quicksort is actually not too bad. So here, we're going to go ahead and take in an array. And what I'm gonna do is also just, if there is, if we're making a recursive call, then we're gonna actually put in the left and right uh, arguments, but if we're not, the initial initial thing, we're going to have default for left and right, for our arguments for left and right, default to zero and the, the length of the array, so the last index of the array. So the leftmost element and the rightmost uh, element, so the indices for those elements. And now we just want to check if left is less than right, that's going to essentially be our base case. As long as left is less than right, we're going to get the pivot Okay, and this is gonna take in the array, the left and the right. And what we wanna do in this pivot is we wanna take, we wanna find the indice where everything to the left of that uh, value is less than and everything right of it is greater than. Okay, we wanna get that pivot index. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna recursively call quicksort and we're gonna go from the left, which is the start, to the pivot index minus one so we're gonna divide and conquer. We're gonna divide it from the left to the pivot index minus one, and we're gonna do the same thing for the right. And it's gonna sort this array in place based on the pivot all the way until it hits that base case. And when it comes back up, it's going to be sorted. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and return the array at that point. Notice we're not returning anything on our recursive calls. We're not saving anything to a variable. We're just doing work on this array recursively but we're just swapping uh, the values in the indices. We're just swapping the values based on the pivot. This will, make a more, this will make more sense as we get into the code, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just go ahead and shrink it and keep it to the side here. Uh, let me grab this here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and shrink this. We'll keep it over here to the side for reference. Uh, let's bring it down a little bit right over here. And then I'm gonna pull this down and we can see that we have a function here for pivot, which is gonna take in an array, a left and a right. And this is really the heart of quicksort, okay? It's understanding how this pivot helper function works. Okay, so what we're gonna have is we're going to initialize an I variable, a J variable, and a pivot a pivot variable, p variable. And the inputs we're getting is left and right and our array. So we have our array right here and we're gonna have our uh, pivot, which we're gonna set to our right, which is gonna be the end of the array in this instance. The left is going to be at the beginning of the array and the i is gonna be one before the left, okay? So it's gonna be one behind j. So as you can see here, we're initializing P to the right, which is right over here. We're initializing J to the left over here, and then we're initializing I, which is left minus one, okay? 
And what we want to figure out here is we want to figure out this 5. We want to put it in the right place where everything, everything to the left of 5 is going to be less than 5 and everything to the right of 5 is going to be greater than 5. That's our goal with, with this. And then we're going to return the index. Okay. So let's just kind of step through how this is going to work. We know our p is at 5 and we're going to check is j, is the value at j less than 5? Okay, is j here less than uh, 5 here? It is not. So what we're going to do is we're going to increment j. We're going to check again. Is the value at j less than 5? Okay, it's not. So we're going to increment j. Again, we're going to check. Is the value at at p here, 5, less than uh, j. It's not. Now we get here, okay, and we say, okay, is the value at j less than the value at 5? It is. So what do we want to do? What we're going to do is we're going to increment i, okay, and then we're going to swap j and i. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the 2 here, and the 8 over here. Okay, let's get the correct color here. We're going to put the 2 here, and we're going to put the 8 over here. Okay, and now we're going to continue on with, with checking. Is the value at P, which is 5, is that less than the value at J, which is 6? No, it's not. We increment J. Is the value at P, which is 5, is it less than, or I'm sorry, is the value at J, which is 3, is it less than the value at P, which is 5? Yes, it is. And so what do we want to do? We want to increment I, and then we want to swap I and J. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put 3 here, and we're going to put 6 over here. And then we're going to continue on with our Incrementation. So now we get to the end. J is equal to P. So when we when we do that, we're going to break out of the loop, okay? And then we're going to do one last incrementation of I. So we're going to increment I, and then we're going to swap this last time, this last one last swap between wherever P is at and wherever I is at. Okay, so we're going to put the 5 here and we're going to put the 9 over here. Okay? And now we know that wherever this 5 is, wherever i is at, right, is the correct indice. Okay? We know that 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 this 5 at index 0 1 2 Everything to the right of it is greater than 5, and everything to the left of it is less than 5. So we know that this 5, this wherever this i is, is the correct indice, and then we just go ahead and return that i. And if you can see here, if we kind of reference this main code here, we're going to get this pivot index, and then we're going to recursively call left to the pivot index minus 1. So we're going to recursively call this part of the array, and then we're going to call again, recursively call p index plus 1, which is this part of the array, and just go ahead and do the same thing. And in that way, we're going to split this array through indices, and we're going to put each single one of those elements in its correct position. Okay, And once we reach a point where left is no longer less than right, we just go ahead and return the array. The array gets sorted one element at a time using this pivot method where we put each element in its correct indice where everything to the left of it is greater and everything to the right of it is less than. Okay, so it, it is a little confusing to get your head around. I highly recommend if this doesn't make sense to go ahead and take, you know, just take a random input of five to six numbers and then just walk through the code. Now, what is our time and space complexity on this? Well, we're using a divide and conquer approach, so our time complexity on this is going to be uh, O of n log n. 
okay? Now, if if we have to do a swap, okay, this is this then this 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 time complexity is really dependent on what we choose as the pivot. If our tree is going to be lopsided, meaning that it's going to split on one side only once and then we have to go and split everything you know like if, if each pivot index is coming over here and then over here and we're splitting this and we're splitting that and we're splitting this and that if if that's the case then our time complexity is actually quadratic it's o of n squared okay but if we're doing an even split on each um, on each recursive call we get o of n log n which is pretty good okay on time now what about space complexity? Well, we're not creating any new arrays relative to the size of the input, so our space complexity on this is constant. Okay? So average case, you can assume that you're gonna get n log n time with quicksort, and it really depends on the pivot, if the array is partially sorted or not. It just depends on how that splitting is gonna happen in the pivot. However, space complexity, we're going to get constant space complexity, which is pretty good. Okay, so that's quick sort, the conceptual. Let's jump into the code. Okay, and so what we're going to have here is we want to just set our default for left and right. So we'll say left is going to default to zero, right is going to default to nums dot length minus one. And then we just want to check if left is less than right, we want to do some work. And what we want to do is go ahead and get our pivot index. And we'll just have a helper function that takes in uh, our input array. It's going to take in the left and the right. And now we're going to recursively call quicksort. And what, what do we want to do? Well, we want to pass in our nums array. And then we want to go from the left to the pivot index minus 1. We want to recursively call our sort array, our quick sort. And we want to start at pivot index plus 1 and right. And then we just want to return our nums. Okay, so this code is actually not too complicated. This is fairly simple. It's this pivot, which is where the complication happens. That's really the, the root or the heart of, of, this, of this problem. So let's go ahead and um, code that out. So we're gonna have our pivot. It's gonna take in nums. It is going to take in um, a left and a right. Okay. And now we want to create three variables. We want to have our pivot, which is going to equal our right. We're going to have our j, which is going to equal left. And we're going to have our i, which is going to be left minus 1. Okay. And now what do we want to do? We want to make sure that while j is less than um, p, Okay, so while that jth index is less than p, we can actually say less than or equal to p. Okay, what do we want to do? We want to check if the value at j, okay, so if nums at j is less than, is less than um, the value at nums at p, what do we want to do? We want to increment i, and then we want to swap nums at i and nums at j. So nums at i, nums at j is going to equal nums at j and nums at i. Okay? And then we want to increment j. Else, what do we want to do? We just want to increment j. Okay, lastly, we want to do one last swap, is we want to increment i, and then go ahead and swap nums at i and nums at 
p, which is going to equal nums at p and nums at i. Okay, and then all we do is return our ith index. Okay, let me zoom out so you can see all this code. Okay, so that is that is the code. It is confusing. It, this, is a, this is a very complicated algorithm to get your head around, and it, it, it's not going to come easily. Uh, it, it takes a few times to really stare at this, to really kind of step through it, to understand what's going on here. Okay, but that's the code. Let's go ahead and run it, make sure everything works. Okay, and so it works, and you can see that the performance is not the best on this, and that's because it really depends on what you're using as the pivot. Okay, there's a lot of different variations to this. So if the array is highly unsorted, this is a good algorithm to use because you can get n log n time. But if the array is already mostly sorted, this, this doesn't tend to perform, uh, to perform as well. So you get n squared on that. So you just want to be cognizant of that, and, and unlike merge sort, which is n log n on best case, worst case, or even average case, merge sort uses extra space. So if you want an n log n solution or performance on this, and you want to do it in place, and the array is highly unsorted, then quick sort can be a good candidate for that. Okay, so that is lead code number 912, quick sort. Um, here's one more look at the code. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.